I think it behooves us to just acknowledge the death of Matthew Perry. And uh, yeah, just, although not this huge A-list star in Hollywood, he mm. undoubtedly impacted a generation of not just Americans, but of people in the English speaking world. And so myself included. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's impossible to overstate just how popular Friends was. You know, what, it ran for, what, 10 years between 94 and 2004? 2004. And it was an absolute juggernaut. It was a behemoth. I'm trying to think of something that is comparable to it that's out now. I mean, there's so much more now, but it's almost something like Game of Thrones. It was like a show. I mean, obviously, it's a completely yeah. different kind of show, but it was just the kind of show that everybody watched it. You know, it was on on like I mean, even in the UK, it was on. I think at a slightly different time and slightly uh, slightly later than it was on in the US. But that was pre-internet, and so it didn't really matter. You know, spoilers yeah. wasn't really a thing unless the papers right. picked up like something about one of the weddings or something like that. Yeah. You know, it didn't matter that you were watching it sort of six months after it had screened in the UK or in the US or anything like that. But it was it was massive and. It was everywhere. During that period, I worked at a Virgin Megastore, which is like a big sort of HMV or something, as a part-time job while I was at university. And there would always, particularly at Christmas time, be like massive just racks of friends merchandise. You know, yeah, you'd have all the VHS tapes there of the latest series, but there would be just mugs and scarves and calendars. and, And they would sell like hotcakes every year, year after year after year. It was uh yeah. it was huge. I think I posted on Facebook. Um, there's probably no single show that has impacted Tammy and I together as a couple right, right. Uh, with more laughter and joy than friends. I mean, it is like you said, you cannot underestimate or understate how massive this show was. And as I indicated in my Facebook post, we lived on Wellington Street quite near Lang Kwai Fong back in the 90s. The movie land store, the video store in Lang Kwai Fong. Mm. Back then it was a two story. I mean, for Hong Kong, it was it was a mega store for Hong Kong size. Yeah, yeah I remember. And yeah. uh, they used to get the the Friends VHS t- tapes in there. And so Tammy and I, when they get a new one in, we'd rent it. We'd go downstairs to Beirut's, order a bunch of Lebanese food, oh, walk, go back home set out a picnic and we would binge watch four episodes long before binging became a thing. That's it. I remember each tape had four episodes on it, yep. didn't it? Yeah. 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 We we would get excited because you get to the end of an episode and you know, we now binging is a thing, but back then you waited every week for a new episode. And so the whole idea that when an episode ended and another one would start up automatically, it was yeah. like, this is heaven. <laughs> oh yeah this this notion of having to like wait a week i mean i suppose some shows still play that way but uh i mean it's it's no surprise remember when a few years ago netflix paid what like a hundred million dollars for friends for the rights for friends or something and everyone was like that's ridiculous and it's like no you know it i, I completely get it and then i mean then what happened was kind of slightly frustrating because uh it, it meant a whole younger generation went and watched it and they kind of ripped it apart In the same way that they kind of ripped apart all the old like James Bond movies and stuff when they became available. Because the problem with comedy, you know, I'm not trying to explain something that's very obvious, is that it changes over time. And something that's Mm -hmm. acceptable one minute is unacceptable the next minute. And it moves in both directions. Uh, and And there are, and I think the show, yeah, if you watch it through a 2023 lens, uh, I think particularly, uh, homophobic jokes i think were a yeah. big were a, a big part of it um not in any particularly egregious way but it no, was just sort of no. a group of friends kind of just going that's a bit that's a bit like this that's a bit that's like it. that i mean this is you got to remember this is very broad mainstream network television oh yeah at the, at the so, end of the day so they would actually affirm gay characters but you would never have any of those six be gay in the 90s right right and there are, you know and people complain that all six are white you know, yeah. and that but really again, white, white people do hang out together, just like black people hang this out is together. And uh, I remember no one really yeah. called it out for that back in the day. Uh, no. the, I remember the big thing that, that the show used to get called out for again and again and again back in the day was they would never be able to afford those apartments. Uh, that's <laughs> what I remember. No way yeah. that these struggling, you got the waitress, you got the struggling actor, these huge New York apartments. And uh, I think only David Schwimmer's character had like a real job. 
Well, no, don't you remember Matthew Perry Chandler worked in the city? That's uh, right. But the, the, the running joke was no one knew what he did. No, That's no, right. it was it was yeah. something. What, what does he finance. do? What does Chandler do? It was do? something. It was something yeah. in finance or so. He was the yeah. one who had the best. Job. He had the he had the boss where the guy would smack him on the butt. Would <laughs> well done, Bing. Seems about hard work, but it's also about having fun. Good to have you aboard, Bing. <laughs> <laughs> right. be like, but it was a running joke that none of the others knew exactly what he did for a mm. living. Yeah, and and Chim, I mean Matthew Perry was brilliant. He was that yeah. sarcastic. Can you be more? You know. <laughs> well, he just had that. By the end, he just had that gesture, didn't he? he was just like, yeah. well, they all just kind of did that yeah. to each other by the end. Yeah, it was one of those shows where they just the the characters kind of. It wasn't like they became the characters; like the characters became them. Yeah. After after yeah. a while, and and I think the the scripts just were molded around the actors, and they yeah. were such a formidable group as well. I mean, what I haven't seen, and I'm kind of surprised but not surprised at the same time, is last time I checked, or certainly within the first sort of 24 hours or so after, that I had I didn't see any official comment from any of the other friends cast. No. Main no, cast. they just they just came out. Uh, I, I imagine they saw... released like a joint statement or something. Yeah, and Hollywood Reporter, uh, and, and I think it's all all the news feeds now. They're basically saying, "Listen, we're absolutely devastated. The the five of us. Yeah, um, we will speak more of this later. But for the time being, we just want to grieve. He was more than a friend. He was family. Well, the very appropriate statement was made. I mean, yeah, and it, he will. I mean, he will always be." Chandler Bing for sure. Yes, but was there anything else you saw him in that you particularly liked? Absolutely, him in? I was a huge fan, and I rewatched the first season and only season of Studio sixty live on the Sunset Strip. I thought you might say that. Yeah, and uh, he and uh, Bradford uh, Whitford, uh, Whit Bradley Whitford, Whit Whitford, Bradley Whitford from West Wing, because it was an Aaron Sorkin show. It was. Um, yeah. That show was so well written and so well done. It's a crime that it never did more than one season. But that one season, I think there's 22 episodes. Uh, in fact, it's due for a rewatch for me now, considering with, with his death. I love that show. And I recommend to anybody, if you haven't seen it, even though it's only a single season, you get 22 of some of the best written episodes on TV. Uh, yes, I, I have heard of it. And again, that is a, a behind the scenes show, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It Maybe I will use this as an opportunity to watch it. I mean, obviously, as as anybody who has spent any time listening to anything that we ever talk about, I haven't watched much TV at all in yeah, the grand yeah. scheme of things. Um, I was aware of it, that it was an Alan Sh Aaron Sorkin show that, that bo so didn't bo well, yeah, it bombed and got cancelled like immediately. Yeah no, yeah. no one watched it. But But everybody that did watch it said it was great. Both people that, who that, watched it loved it. The funny but, thing um, was is that um, uh, that show came out the same time as uh, Thirty Rock. They both launched at the same time. Ah, uh, okay. Well, and, there you go. and everybody and all the money was on the Aaron Sorkin show, not the Tina Fey show. In fact, there was even a uh, <clears throat> there was even a, a commercial or Saturday Night Live episode where. Oh, yeah, it was Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin goes, "Oh, I'm so looking forward to working with Aaron Sorkin," and he's going. You're not. I mean, it was a joke. He, it was. He okay. wasn't a, it wasn't a gaffe. <clears throat> it was. It was something they did. He goes, "Oh yeah, I'm so looking forward to my new show and working with Aaron Sorkin." And they're going, "You're in the other show." He goes, "What? You know, where's my agent?" <laughs> you know, the joke was it was the Tina Fey show that was going to fail. Aaron Sorkin was a done deal. Just coming off the West Wing, West this was Wing. his. New he, this was going to be his new West Wing because he left and West Wing early, didn't he? He didn't after see like it three to the or end. four seasons. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, maybe, maybe that's the thing to do because I was already thinking, oh, shall I rewatch Friends? Because I do like binge watching really crappy sitcoms. Yeah. Because I I recently rewatched or actually watched for the first time all of uh, Big Bang Theory. Uh, oh yeah, that's great. Which was obviously yeah. a very you know a very mixed experience, but that was all shot on exactly the same stages as uh, Friends. Oh, the okay. one big thing, yeah, yeah. the one big thing I knew about Big Bang Theory was that it had kind of inherited that the space, the studio space. Yeah. And you look at it, and you're like, you know, it's the two apartments across the hall and right. the stairs, and it's and it's all positioned very 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 similarly, and it's it's just the yeah. same sets. But um, but yeah, so maybe actually this would be a more yeah. 
fruitful enterprise to finally watch Studio 60 rather than uh, yeah. go back to Friends just yet. Yeah. Very good.